the land. So let's go through a, a technique where we're going to where we lose a facial plate of bone and, and how we do this. So we have two teeth, two bicuspids that are deemed non-restorable. We're going to remove these teeth, a la the techniques that we've demonstrated using the physics forcep, engaging the beak on the palatal aspect of the teeth, rotating our wrist towards the corner of the left eye, not squeezing. It's simply wrist rotation. The teeth will luxate up and out of the sockets and we will take a tooth delivery instrument and remove. Remove these teeth very, very efficiently in a matter of minutes, uh, and we have to evaluate these socket sites. So how do we do that, doctors? We take our curette. We curette, 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 curette. In this situation, it was deemed that we do not have a facial plate of bone. I did not damage the facial plate of bone. It was just melted away because of the fracture over time. We take a radiograph. The, the roots are removed in total. And here I'm taking uh, what's referred to as an Orban knife. It's a very sharp uh, stainless steel uh, blade uh, shape very specifically. And I'm going to reflect, I'm going to reflect this soft tissue beyond the defect. I must see the entire defect to be able to predictively grow a facial plate of bone. So you have to feel comfortable reflecting this tissue. The reflection that I'm making, I'm gonna to refer to as an envelope flap. What does that mean? Visualize a number 10 envelope, a white envelope, the long envelopes, lift the flap and blow into it. I am not making vertical incisions in my reflections. I am not making vertical incisions in my reflections. I try not to incise into mucosa. Once we incise or cut into mucosa, the patients are going to experience a lot of discomfort because we're gonna get histamine and prostaglandin release. We're gonna get swelling and pain in those areas. If we do not incise into mucosa, it is remarkable on the, the very limited amount of discomfort that our patients experience. And you can be truly be a hero in your practice. The vast majority of my patients only take Advil, uh, 600 milligrams of ibuprofen uh, three times a day. Uh, for for postoperative discomfort. Now, in the age of COVID, be a little bit uh, be a little bit more leery of the use of of uh, of our ibuprofen. Uh, and Tylenol is not anti-inflammatory, but certainly uh, is an uh, alternative. So we're making our reflection both facially and palatally, so I can see the entire defect. I went ahead and and uh, placed two implants, and you can certainly see that we have a defect. The the facial threads are completely exposed in this area. I do have initial stability. And here I'm taking my, my, my golden dent, um, a golden os uh, uh, allograft material, and I'm wetting it with either sterile water or sterile saline. And here I'm using an EpiGuide material, uh, which is a resorbable membrane cut to size. Uh, we want to measure twice, cut once in this area. My dad was a carpenter, so I love this uh, this little thing. So just measure twick, cut once um, to eliminate mistake. This is very, very important, doctors. You, you can grow bone, a facial plate of bone, 100% of the time um, by using uh, this technique. So the gold dust particulate is, is unbelievably um, uh, a viable um, graft material uh, that I strongly recommend that you try. And it's very, very cost effective. And, and thank you, Golden Den, for uh, providing it to us. The EpiGuide material, as I mentioned, is a, uh, a polylactic acid material, and it lasts six to 12 um, uh, months. I only need it to last six weeks. We don't need primary closure. So this is important. I said we made our reflection beyond the defect. So if I have an eight millimeter defect, my membrane must be placed at least two millimeters beyond the defect. And you can see it's placed very passively. I know as dentists, we have a tendency to want to tuck and push and tug and rip and tear. If you can see the, the, the defect, we can repair it. So I'm very passively placing my membrane. I'm taking my um, allograft material that's been wetted and I'm packing it around the defect very precisely. And I'm placing my membrane from facial two millimeter, at least two millimeters beyond the defect um, facially and onto the palatal surface. Now, if, if your material is not long enough, you can, you can overlap a couple materials in this situation. You do not need primary closure. 
needless to say, I don't want primary closure because remember, I need at least two millimeters of attached gingiva on the facial aspect of that implant. So I don't want to pull the facial tissue towards the palatal, um, placing that mucosa on the facial aspect of my implants. And again, using my reverse cutting needle, very specific. I'm going from crestal to facial. So I'm sliding over the top of that membrane. I'm not going through the membrane. I have great control. And then I'm doing the same thing by reversing the needle from crestal to palatal, sliding over the top. And you can see my closure with my interrupted sutures. Um, I don't have primary closure, but that's okay. Epithelium will grow from a half a millimeter to a millimeter a day. And in a very short amount of time, that will cover over very nicely. In four months, I expose, I take my impression. Here I made some nice uh, custom titanium abutments with margins at or slightly subgingival and two Bruxer crowns to restore function to our patient. Mm -hmm.